Hey everyone, welcome to the Grace and Truth broadcast. I'm Dwayne Sheriff, and I'm in a series entitled Identity Theft, and I'm sharing on our new identity in Christ. And man, I have enjoyed this. I pray that you've been able to be with us because this has been an adventure into the promises and blessings of God in regards to our new identity, which is in Christ. You and I are members now of the family of God. And that in that, we have an identification with Jesus as His church. We are His body in the earth. That's who we are. That's what we are, is the body of Christ. And yet many people simply have not renewed their minds to this new reality that is in, in Christ. So I want to pick up again with our main text, 2 Corinthians 5, and I'm going to start in verse 16. He's already talked about how God's love is what constrains us now under New Testament grace and how that Jesus died for, for, for all of us. And if He died, we're all dead. And we didn't die physically, but our old man was put to death. So now we live as a new man in Christ unto the Lord Himself. Verse 16 says, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh? Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we Him no more. We do not know Jesus. None of you watching knew Jesus after the flesh. But chances are, if you're watching me, then you know the Lord. You've met the Lord. And so you know Him. Well, how do you know Him? You know Him after the Word and you know Him after the Spirit. Well, He just said we're not supposed to know any man now after the flesh, uh, even as we don't know Jesus after the flesh. Well, how are we supposed to know ourselves? How are we supposed to know each other in the family of God? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and given unto us this ministry of reconciliation. We are to know one another now after the new creation. And that is our new identity that identifies us with Jesus and the family of God. And so one of the things that helped me in processing this was that there are at least three dominant identifications that we all have and that we have to deal with. And the first two are after the flesh. The third one is, again, after Christ. Our first identity that is a part still of our flesh is our short-term identity. We all have a short-term identity, and that's our immediate family, our immediate family. We have an identification with them, and that, to a measure, has shaped our identities, is this short-term identity. You had a mother and a father, and there were some things that make you who you are after the flesh that came from your parents. Uh, if, if, if they were white, you're white. If they were black, you were black. Uh, there's physical features that are a part of our identity after the flesh that come from our, our parents or our grandparents. Uh, you know, if a, a bunch of children came walking into a room, I could identify you in your children and your children in you. They, they look like you, they walk like you, they talk like you. That's a part of their identity, and that came from their immediate family. And some of those things can't be changed. They have to be overcome. They can't be changed. They have to be overcome. Uh, now, I know we could, get into, <laughs> we could get into some silly stuff about uh, selective surgery and, and things of that nature, uh, but basically, if your, your grandfather had a huge, big nose uh, and your dad had a huge, big nose, uh, then you may have a huge, big nose. And that's just a part of your identity. It's a part of being born into that family, the sheriff family. 
uh, a lot of physical features that make up our identity, our personhood, our personality, come from our short-term identity, our short-term uh, families, and there's even genetic code that is a part of our identity after, after the flesh. Some things were psychological identifications that came from our short-term family. Um, my, my grandmother on my dad, dad's side is full-blooded Indian. My grandmother on my mother's side uh, was full-blooded French. So there's an identification in my flesh of, of Indian and French, uh, yet after the flesh, there's no benefit to that. There's no good thing in me that is to say my flesh. Whatever I inherited short-term from my family is not my dominant primary identity. And I don't walk after that identity. I don't ignore that I'm a sheriff. I don't deny that I'm a sheriff. I don't deny that I got this crazy hair from my grandmother on the French side, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Uh, and a lot of things that were short-term identity. I don't deny them. I just don't walk after them. I just don't know myself after them. I just realize in my flesh, Romans 7, 18, there is no good thing. And if I walk after my flesh, after my short-term identity, it produces death, Paul said. And when he says death, if you're walking after the flesh, he's not talking about just physical death. He's talking about depression, condemnation, guilt, shame, uh, insecurities, inferiorities, complexes, depression. That's all a part of flesh and your short-term identity. And you have to learn to reckon yourself dead to that, but alive unto your new now identity in Christ. So again, even your gender, your gender came from God. You're identifying as a male or a female. Gender identity comes from God. That was formed in your mother's womb. Psalms 139, Paul or David said that, that, that God formed him in his mother's womb and that he was knit together by the hand of God and that he was fearfully and wonderfully Created. Moses said in Genesis 1.18 that man is created in the image and in the likeness of God and that God created him, male and female created he him. Male and female. Jesus in Mark chapter 10 verse 6 in answering Israel's question about marriage said that in the beginning God created us male and female. So the creator is the author of your gender and your gender is a part of your creation, your short-term creation. And if you, don't, if you don't look to your creator and worship your creator, you'll worship creation and, and you'll be given over to a reprobate mind in time. You'll lose your mind. You will have no common sense and you will literally self-destruct with no knowledge of, of God, ultimately ending in a devil's hell with a reprobate mind, a mind void of the knowledge of God. And so you can't worship creation. You have to worship the creator. When you worship your emotions, that's worshiping creation. And, and it's idolatry. And behind every idol like that is a demon. And it just literally brings so much confusion and death into people's lives. You need to teach your children early. They came from God. God created them in the womb. God separated them like Jeremiah and the Apostle Paul in their mother's womb for a purpose and a cause and their gender and their basic personality that was woven together in, in, in their mother's womb. God designed them to match their purpose and part of that is the design of male and, and female. Our children do not need to be confused and have an imposed identity all this identity confusion, it was unheard of when I was a kid, brothers and sisters. This is imposed identity confusion. This is imposed and conformed identity in these precious little children's hearts. And you need to teach and train your children early. God is the author of their gender assignment, and He only assigned two, male and 
female. After that, you have all these other identifications after the flesh that have to be dealt with as, as well. And so your short-term identity is your immediate family. Your long-term identity is the family of man in Adam. The family of man in Adam. You know, people talk about their roots and their family tree, and I, I'm not against that. I'm not trying to, to rain on anyone's parade here. But if you're an honest person and you want to discover your roots, you can't go back just three generations, four generations, 14 generations. If you go back to your origin you go all the way back to Noah, a drunken sailor. And then if you go a little further past Noah, <laughs> you come to Adam. We all came out of Noah and his three sons. And again, our identity, if we're sincere, goes all the way back to Adam. We all came out of Adam. We all are a part of the human race. There may be diversity of, of color, there may be diversity of personality, diversity of gifts and talents and strengths. There's a lot of diversity within, the, within the, the human experience. But the one thing that we all have in common is that we all came out of Adam. We have a long-term identification. It's the family of man. We're all a part of the human race, and we all came out of one man, Adam. And that identification is the source of all your insecurities and all your complexes and, and all your depression and discouragement. It all comes from the family of man. We're all born into a fallen identity, a identity that God never intended for us to have and an identification with Adam. And in Adam, that identification, all sin and come short of the glory. All are under guilt and condemnation. All are under judgment, Romans chapter 5 says. And so we have to understand that's our long-term identity. And as long as we stay in the family of man, it's called the flesh, then we're going to be dominated by the character traits that dominate the family of man. And that is death, guilt, judgment, condemnation. But see, our third identity gives us power over our first two identities that are after the flesh, and that is the family of God. We're identified now, and we find our identification not in short-term or long-term family, but in the family, the family of God, and that is called in Christ in the Scriptures. Every time you say, in, every time you see in Christ by Christ, with Christ, through Christ, is talking about the new creation. It's talking about our new family. That in our spirit, man, we're born again. We're the sons and daughters of God. And we have a new identity, and it is not a sin identity. It's a righteous identity. It's not guilt and condemnation. It's forgiveness. Did you know your new identity in Christ is forgiven? Totally forgiven and God will not impute any sin unto you. Your sins have been fully and completely atoned for. And God has extended complete, thorough, and full redemption and forgiveness. And that's my new identity. I do not identify with sin anymore. It doesn't mean I don't sin. It doesn't mean I don't fail. It means that's not my identification any longer. That's not who I am but I am righteous and truly holy and I identify with justification and forgiveness. So I go to God in any sin or weakness or failure and by His grace, He empowers me to overcome it, to prevail now. So my new identity gives me power over short-term identity. I don't deny again I'm a sheriff and I don't deny I have physical features that came from my short-term family, but I'm not dominated by those now. I'm not, I'm not focused on those now. I know no man, including myself, after the flesh. But I'm known now after the Spirit, after Christ and my new identity. Man, that long-term identity in Adam, the family of man, 
I am no longer connected to that identity. That's what God crucified was the old man in Adam. Man, I identify now with the family of God, not the Adam's family. (laughs) It's the Adam's family that's mixed up. It's the Adam's family that's messed up. It's the Adam's family. I don't know if you remember that series called The Adam's Family. But those people were weird. Those people were messed up. They were mixed up. And And the thing is, they thought everybody else was weird. They were all ugly, and they thought everybody else was, uh, uh, was ugly. When in fact, everybody else was beautiful, and they were ugly. And those in Adam, those who still identify with their flesh, identify more with their race than grace, identify more with their upbringing than their new bringing about as a member of the family of God, Man, those people are just full of discouragement, bitterness, anger, victimology, defeat. All that's through your long-term identity in the Adams family. And you're no longer in the Adams family. Yeah, you still have an identification that you have to reckon dead. I reckon myself dead to the Adams family and alive to the family of God. Hallelujah. You are alive in the family of God and you are dead to the Adam's family. Who and what you were in Adam was buried. It died, not dying. It died and because it died, it could be buried and it was buried. And you've been raised anew, a new creation, a new person. And your new identification is connected to victory, not being a victim. Overcoming, not being overcome. God's prosperity, not all this poverty. Dependency upon God, not the government. Why are so many people dependent upon the government? Because of the weakness of their flesh and identifying with their flesh and thinking they are helpless, hopeless, poverty stricken. And the truth of the matter is you are no longer helpless, you're no longer hopeless, and you're not poverty stricken. You have obtained an inheritance in the kingdom of God, and you now are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. You're not just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror, and you're not overcome by this world. You are overcoming and overcomers of the world. It's a total new mindset, total new concept of identification. Man, in the family of God, beloved, I wish above all things, 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We are blessed. What's your new identification in Christ? Blessed. What's your old identification in Adam? Cursed. Defeated. Victims. Man, when I sit here and think about all the death that's dominating, especially the political landscape today, Identity politics is destroying people. Identity politics is poisoned the hearts and minds of so many people. And they have hate in their heart, division in their heart, racism in their heart. All they see is flesh. All they know is flesh. So everybody is judged by appearance. Everybody's judged by their associations. Man, that's just powerful. And the only victory, 1 John 5 Verses 1 through 4 talks about he that overcometh the world. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who is he that overcomes the world? He that has faith in Jesus. Your faith in Jesus takes you out of being dominated by short-term identity, long-term identity, but gives you a new term, a new covenant where you are a new creation in the family of God with a brand new identity. Look at Galatians chapter chapter 6. Galatians chapter chapter 6. Look at verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Think about how people glory in their flesh, glory in their race, glory in their victimology. Glory in their bad attitudes. Glory in in bitterness and hate and anger. All that. 
is short-term and long-term identity in the family of man. And Paul says, God forbid that I would glory in anything but the cross. Because at the cross, God put to death my old man in Adam and that long-term identity of sinner and, and sin and death and condemnation and guilt and shame. And because of my new man, resurrected man in Christ, I'm identified now with righteousness and justification and redemption and, and, and forgiveness in Jesus, hallelujah. And I see myself as a new creation and I see my brothers and sisters as a new creation. I see myself after Christ and I see everybody else after Christ, not after the flesh. Look at this right here. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Wow, what a strong statement. What a powerful statement that was when it was made and when it was written. Because the Jewish people, that was their identification. That's what connected them even to the covenant of Abraham was circumcision. That was a mark in their flesh that separated them, sanctified them from everybody else in the world. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this. Circumcision is not something that I'm comfortable talking about, nor probably are you comfortable listening about. But why in the world did God mark the Hebrew people in that part of their body, in that part of their flesh? Circumcision was what sealed their covenant with God. It was the mark of the covenant that God made with Abraham and the circumcision of his faith. But it didn't make them righteous and it, 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 it didn't make them uh, God's people just by a mark in their flesh, even though it was vital. Abraham was justified by faith and then he got circumcised. Israel was to be justified by faith in the, in the true and the living God and the Savior to come. And then that mark of circumcision was in their flesh because it represented the seed that was to come, the promised seed that was Jesus Christ. And then faith in the promised seed made you a part of that promise seed. And it was seed singular, not seeds as of many, but as of one, and that seed being, being Jesus, the Messiah, the promise, the promised seed. And if you don't think it was still important and powerful, Moses was called and raised up to be the deliverer of Israel. And on the way, God intervened and sought to kill him because he had not circumcised his two boys. And if you're going to be the deliverer of Israel, then you're going to have to honor the Abrahamic covenant, which included circumcision. And because he didn't circumcise his children, he couldn't be the deliverer. And so Sipporah circumcised the two boys. She wasn't happy about it, called it a bloody religion. But in that circumcision, that sealed the covenant, and he was able to still go and be the deliverer. So circumcision before the cross meant a lot. It was powerful. It was important. But what Paul is saying is circumcision doesn't avail anything now. Nothing and no mark of your flesh separates you unto God or makes you special. All flesh is bad and no good. And now it's the circumcision of the heart in the inward man that makes us pleasing pleasing to God. What he's saying is nothing after the flesh matters are as important but the new creation. The new creation is everything. The chapter before that, chapter 5, verse 6, Paul said, in Christ Jesus, circumcision doesn't avail anything nor uncircumcision, but faith that works by love. When you put those together, we have to have faith in the new creation and that's what pleases God. Man, I'm excited. I went a little longer. I'm running out of time. We're making available the first two chapters of my first book, Identity Theft, available free on my website. You can contact us through email and get the link exceedingly fast through the email address. The email address is dsm 
at PastorDwayne.com. D-S-M, that's Dwayne Sheriff Ministries, D-S-M at PastorDwayne.com, and we'll get your first two chapters to you promptly, available free. You can also call us at area code 580-4040-376. Area code 580-4040-376. I have prayer partners available that can get you immediately connected to the link for your free copy of the first two chapters of Identity Theft. I believe you'll enjoy these. It'll give you a good, a good flavor of the book and uh, perhaps you would like the rest of the chapters. You can go to the bookstore and order Identity Theft or wherever books are sold. I want to take a moment to say thank you to my financial partners. You make this broadcast available and all of our free stuff available. You can go to my website, pastordwayne.com, pastor, D-U-A-N-E, Dwayne.com, and that'll take you to all of our messages. Also have a podcast available of previous previous broadcast, and you can listen to those at your, at your leisure. We also want to thank again our partners for making all of our free CDs available. You can order CDs absolutely free on the website. We have video messages and audio messages available for free as well. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast. God bless you. Hey, we want to take a moment to say thank you to our impact partners for your generosity. It's because of your partnership that we're able to continue to give away Dwayne's teachings completely free. To become a partner, you can visit our website or call the number on the screen. Thanks so much for your generosity and for taking part in our mission to help people grow in Christ. Dwayne Sheriff's book, Identity Theft, is crucial for our world today. People are so confused about who they are and what their purpose is. This book helps uncover the lies the world uses to keep us from discovering our true identity. Dwayne also shares his own life story and his personal journey to discovering who he is in Christ. You can order this book on our website or by calling the number below. Take this opportunity to get your copy of Identity Theft today. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoyed this message.